великий пятигодный план, конечно, не такой великий, как матушка Россия. Seeing a recording of Soldier Boy doing a terrible rap has truly made my day complete. Fab Five Freddy told me everybody's fly. DJ spinning, I said my my. MM doesn't feel the same way though, because of the whole grandpa killing stuff. Butch has been suffering a long lasting hangover from taking Temp V, and Huey catches on. Where'd you even get it? One of them websites. Bonus for days. No, 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 none of your smirky shit. I only had one dose, all right? He convinces Frenchy to use his Russian contact, Nina, to get hold of the weapon that the Russians use to bring down Soldier Boy, offering her the money that Sheree owes, plus a little more to tickle her titties. She says, okay, I'll get you into Russia, but you've got to do a side mission for me when you get there. The side mission is for Kimiko to disguise herself as a lady of adult entertainment. And when inside, go kill some gross Harvey Weinstein looking dude for a reason that's not being disclosed. Maybe just the crime of looking like Harvey Weinstein is enough. The funny part of this scene is the cabinet filled with soup themed toys, such as Homelander's Star Spangled Banger, the Deep Flounder Pounder, <laughs> Black Noir Silent Screamer, and the Hausenberger Squirter. She uses the Silent Screamer to silence him, and then gets to work on the rest of his goons with the rest of his toys. Yeah, there ain't no way this is going to be unpixelated. One of my favourite moments in this episode, and possibly the whole series, is A-Train's commercial for his energy drink, which is a parody of the extremely cringe Pepsi advert, sorry, commercial, starring Kendall Jenner. The non-specific protest where Pepsi, and now A-Train's energy drink, is the thing that keeps the peace and saves the day. We gotta listen to each other. A-Train's Turbo Rush Energy Drink. Oh man, the cringe of the original hurts so good. And the parody version is just mwah, chef's kiss. It's an example of clever commentary from the boys for once. If you're going to make a point about corporations being out of touch, make it funny like this. Victoria Newman is expected to give a speech which exposes Homelander, but instead she exposes Stan Edgar for all his shady deals behind the curtain. It suggested that Homelander threatened the life of her daughter. So, with Stan out of the picture, Homelander has full control of the Seven. Eventually, probably soon, the world will recognize you for the pitiful disappointment you are. You are not a god. You are simply bad product. Later that evening, Newman gives her daughter a dose of V to protect her from any future threats. A messed up last resort, considering the immediate pain it brings to the body as your anatomy changes violently upon receiving the V. But honestly, if I was in her position, I'd do the exact same for my kid. Before entering the military controlled compound, Butch doses up on V as a precaution, and also because it feels amazing. Ui wants in because drugs are cool and are for cool people in the fictional world of Amazon Prime's The Boys. They cut the power to the building and sneak in, discovering a V'd up hamster which breaks the glass, alerting the guards to their position. When things get hairy, Butcher uses his powers, and it looks amazing. Ui then surprisingly uses teleporting powers, revealing that he took a dose of V2. The rest of the gang are pissed at them both for doing this. You're better than this kid. <laughs> they find Soldier Boy being kept in a gas controlled coma, and when he wakes, his body immediately starts going radioactive. An ability which we discover removes the powers of the soup it hits. As we can see here, Kimiko is now unable to heal. Monko. Open your eyes, Kimiko. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Monko. Kimiko, there you go. The episode ends with Homelander taking Starlight to a rooftop to make it clear that the scheming behind his back stops now. Otherwise, the people that she cares about will end up like Supersonic. You f***ing psycho. Stop it. You know how that ends. Earlier, Supersonic was trying to help A-Train get back at Homelander, but as we can see, A-Train betrayed his trust by telling Homelander about Supersonic and Starlight's conversations. 
from here on out, there is only my dutiful, loving, main squeeze starlight. Because if you step one inch out of line, I mean, if you so much as blink the wrong way, then that will be Huey. Я не буду читать это название, оно слишком длинное. В этой серии танцуют и поют. Все. Ashley is announced as the replacement CEO, but Homelander enters the room to remind her that he's the big cahoon around here. He does the same to some lady on the board who dares to speak up. Do you think you know better than me? I don't know, maybe you think you should be sitting in my chair and I should be sitting all the way down there in yours. Oh God, no sir. I, I'm sorry, I, I was just, it was stupid of me. I'm so stupid and you're so great. Starlight notices that Huey's arm is no longer broken, and when he reveals the reason why, she slams some white claws to remain calm. I see that she's drinking the natural lime flavour, which might just be the most disgusting flavour of white claw. I mean, I find white claws to be trash anyway. Sorry, California hipsters. Well, anyway, it seems not even slamming three white claws wasn't enough to chill her out. You shot up an untested drug from Vought. You could have gotten yourself killed. I love how he tries to BS, saying that taking V feels awful, but then immediately takes it back. You loved it. I fucking really loved it. It was awesome. I wasn't scared. I, I, I saved MM. Me. Queen Maeve delivers more temp V to Butcher, and they sit down with a drink to share their personal issues, such as Butcher's hatred for soups, meaning that she will have to be killed at some point too. And in a twist that no one saw coming, Maeve and Butcher start slapping thighs. Kimiko's recovering in hospital, and she's happy about losing her powers, because it also means her ability to speak is returning. This scene then turns into an out-of-pocket musical number, which of course is just in her imagination. I got starlight, I got sweet dreams. I got more Who could ask for anything more? She feels so giddy at the end that she kisses Frenchie. This will be an important moment to keep in mind for season 4. Taken aback by the kiss, he gets some coffee to reflect, but then he gets kidnapped by Nina's men for refusing to do a mission for her. When he doesn't return, Kimiko assumes that he ran off, being freaked out by her smooches. This next scene is pretty funny. We see Crimson making money as a cam girl, and Seth Rogen is the guy jerking it while she does butt stuff. <laughs> Get ready. I don't really like Seth Rogen, but I enjoyed this cameo. And interestingly, as I'm sure many of you know, he's an executive producer for this show. Knowing that Soldier Boy would try to get back in contact with his old gang, Payback, Butcher and Milk chain Crimson to the floor as bait. She frets that Soldier Boy doesn't just want to see her, he wants to kill her, for reasons she's not willing to reveal. Milk's Geiger counter starts going off, signalling his approach. Knowing that Milk's going to go crazy seeing Soldier Boy, Butcher gives him some night-night medicine. I'm sorry. <sighs> I'll be right in the morning. Butcher asks that they make a trade. He hands over Crimson to Soldier Boy, and he'll do a favour for Butcher in return. When Soldier Boy gets inside, he asks why Crimson gave him up, causing his many years of incarceration and torture. When she reveals that she never loved him, he goes nuclear mode. Starlight's upset that Huey knew all along about Butcher's plan to use Soldier Boy as a weapon and didn't think to tell her about it, and also because he's still taking Temp V. Huey urges her to see that this drastic measure is the only viable one against Homelander, but she's all mopey because she wants to take a less chaotic approach. Or something, who really cares? <laughs> I don't know, as the show goes on, I find myself caring less and less about the arguments these two keep getting into, and to be honest, their relationship as a whole. If they split up, I don't think I'd care. A-Train's trying to get a soup named Blue Hawk to own up to his racial discrimination, seeming to only target black neighbourhoods when fighting crime. He goes to a community hall and gives a half-hearted speech, and then tries to pay them off rather than offering any solutions. Naturally, the community call him out, and things get heated to the point where a huge fight breaks out, leading to A-Train's brother being paralysed. The boys visit an ex-employee of Vault, who goes by the nickname Legend. 
He used to be the hero manager, like Ashley was, but left for whatever reason to help the boys. A part of him doesn't want to be involved with Butcher again, because the last time he lost that certain part of him. You can't trust a man like that. Everything and everyone he touches turns to shit. He admits that Soldier Boy came to see him to pick up his old super suit. This legend guy remains a part of this season, so we'll be seeing him again soon. Super Gazam, блять, самая лучшая сепия пацанов. Я люблю её больше, чем всех моих детей. This is it. This is the best episode of the boys. At the time of recording, season 5 isn't out yet, but I still feel confident that this episode will go down in history as being the peak of this series. The episode opens with a hilarious parody of that truly awful and out of touch cover of John Lennon's Imagine that we were subjected to during COVID, as if we weren't going through enough back then. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. Imagine there is no cut. We cut to Homelander freaking out about Soldier Boy being spotted on CCTV, not understanding how or why he's back on the scene. It's impossible. He died like 40 years ago. Someone's cosplaying? Look at his face. It's him. He demands that Ashley makes it her number one priority to keep this news under wraps, as Soldier Boy used to be the biggest hero on the scene, which threatens Homelander's rule as king now he's back. He confides in Black Noir, seeing as how he was part of Payback, but he gives no indication to Homelander that he knows anything. But then when he gets into the elevator and rips out his tracking chip in front of a terrified employee, we suspect that he does know something. Oh, thank you. When Homelander finds out that Black Noir's gone missing, his heartbreak is hard to contain, feeling that he was the last good friend he had. While Soldier Boy enjoys some long overdue American comforts, like cheeseburgers, whiskey, and prescription drugs, the boys explain to him that despite all his powers, he lacks the understanding of modern technology, and without their help, he'll have a difficult time finding the rest of Payback. All they ask in return for their help is adding Homelander to his hit list. Soldier Boy is so comically behind on the times that he still thinks Bill Cosby is an American hero, and he recoils at the sight of seeing fathers taking on motherly duties. Bill Cosby is America's dad, and I'll tell you one thing, he would be caught dead in that pussy gear. Lot to unpack there. Um... Because, that's a real man. <laughs> Holy shit, did he make some strong drinks. His levels of radiation increase with the frustration of feeling abandoned by his own people and country. Earlier on, there was an incident downtown where he exploded unexpectedly, and he mournfully expresses that he didn't mean to. Something just happened that triggered his powers, in a form of PTSD, but his mind is suppressing what that trigger is. I blacked out about 10 minutes. When I came to and the damage was done, I didn't mean to hurt those people. I'm not a bad guy. A-Train is pissed that Vault aren't taking action against Blue Hawk, but then Ashley reminds him that Vault have already had to work tirelessly to cover up all the things that A-Train has done in the past, and it's kind of rich of him to ask for more. She demonstrates the amount of stress that he's putting her under. Justice. Yeah. You want justice? Yeah. This is the first episode where we see Homelander talking to himself in the mirror, as a way to mentally process the idea of being dethroned by Soldier Boy. And from this conversation, we learn that he's done this since he was a child, to get through the traumatic moments. When we were kids, alone in the bedroom, I got us through it, right? Don't I always? Always. A good reminder that Homelander isn't just a monster for no reason. He's been through hell in his life. Okay, here we go, the part of the episode we've all been waiting for. The TNT twins host an annual super G, referred to as Herogasm. The Deep is here by orders of Homelander, as Soldier Boy will likely be searching here for the twins. For this same reason, Milk and Starlight are the next ones to come knocking. Hilariously, MM comes face to face with the giant Wang again. You seem familiar. You're about to get familiar with these hands if you don't get this motherfucking love sausage away from my goddamn face. Okay, okay. When inside, it's like a prawn hub convention, which means there's not much of this I can show you. Even for you guys watching on Patreon, I'm gonna have to censor some of this to avoid it being age restricted. 
Soldier Boy arrives at the party, and Huey teleports Starlight away to prevent her from getting hurt. She sees that his insecurities are coming through, about not being as strong as her, and feeling that he has to take this temp V to be of value to her. Milk finds Soldier Boy and tries to take him out, but he's unaffected by his gas grenade. <sighs> Butcher prevents Milk from trying anything further, knowing that it will only get him killed. But the way Milk sees it is that he's being prevented from getting his revenge. So he attacks Butcher with all his might. But Butcher's still doped up on V, so it's a wasted effort. Soldier Boy's trigger is a Russian song that he used to hear when being tortured. And hearing it again at this party means that everyone in this house is about to get fucked. <laughs> Well, naturally, the key characters survive this. As Blue Hawk flees the scene, A-Train snags him and makes him pay for what he did to his brother, turning him into a meat crayon against the road. A-Train has another heart attack for overexerting himself. And now we get the epic clash of Homelander v Soldier Boy, and then also Butcher. What have you done? Scorched Earth. Honestly, I would love to show you the whole fight, because all of it is amazing. But in the spirit of recaps, we'll skip to the climax, where Homelander's pinned down and is about to be blasted by Soldier Boy's radiation, but his anger gives him a much needed surge of strength. The aftermath of Herogasm is perhaps the only evidence that Starlight can use to bring down Homelander's social media score. So she live streams all the victims and reveals the secret to the world that Soldier Boy is back and Homelander is the one trying to cover it up. She then declares that she's done being part of the Seven. I'm not Starlight anymore. My name is Annie January and I fing quit. Kimiko is stuck in hospital, worrying about Frenchie, but then she too gets kidnapped by Nina's guys. When she wakes up, she's tied up along with Frenchie and Cherie. Frenchie's then forced to decide which of his love interests is going to die, but then Kimiko breaks free with her powers slowly coming back. But as they're not fully back, she struggles in the fight. It's a brutal scene, especially when he's breaking all her ribs. Again, I can't show you too much of this, so we're skipping to the end. Nina escapes, but luckily Frenchie and Kimiko survive. And while recording this, I actually forget if Cherie survives. The answer to this is on screen now. Psychological trauma, конечно, она повеселее, когда про неё рассказывают животные. Vaults are weaponizing the political divide between the left and right, attributing Starlight's behavior to the oppressive left, who just hate the American dream and capitalism, and just want to bring Homelander and Vault down, and blah blah blah, you get the gist. She is trying to incite a panic. I wonder if Starlight's actions could be considered treason. Me too. One detail I forgot to mention is that Vault's hiding Queen Maeve, after Homelander literally sniffed out her boinking session with Butcher. William Butcher. Smell all over you. You really will do anything to hurt me, won't you? Wow, Butch has got quite the pungent stank if you can still smell him. So yeah, he knows that she was helping Butcher get the V. In this episode, we see that she's being held in a soup resistant cell, and Homelander's pressing her for answers on what Butcher's up to. She immediately spots that he's wearing concealer to cover up the bruises from the fight, and she absolutely relishes in the moment. This is still a top three day, because today is the day I saw you scared. In the woods, Butcher and Huey are helping Soldier Boy find Mindstorm. As a funny detail, they're keeping Soldier Boy sedated on a constant supply of 420, just so he doesn't go into full meltdown again. They walk into one of Mindstorm's traps, allowing him to use his powers and get inside of Butcher's head, trapping his present self within the traumatic memories of his past self. Pah, past self. Completely paralyzed on the outside, unable to escape this hell without Mindstorm breaking him out. There's gotta be a way we can wake him up. Mindstorm put him into this. He can snap him out. Okay, great, great. But he's about uh, to be dead. Wait, just, just hang on. His memory is the abuse that he and his brother used to face at the hands of their father. Then we see how Butcher's outbursts lead him to feel like he's becoming his father, and his present self pleads with his brother Lenny not to listen to the toxic words coming from his mouth. You ought to take a page out of his book. 
You don't want to be a f***ing little puff all your life. Don't you listen to him. Don't you listen to that worthless number shine. Huey and Soldier Boy find where Mindstorm is hiding, but Huey teleports him back to Butcher before Soldier Boy can kill him. He begs for him to wake Butcher, and in exchange, he'll teleport him far away to safety. In his final dream, he sees young Butcher leaving to join the army, believing that Dad will go softer on Lenny without Billy around to fight with. Lenny can't take it anymore, so he grabs a gun from the cupboard and says how this is Butcher's fault. Because anyone who's ever loved you, you end up getting them killed, don't you? Me, Becca, now Yui. No! I'm sorry. I'm so fucking sorry. Sorry for what? Damn, that was a real vulnerable moment for Butcher. Makes you really feel for him. Not to take away from the emotion of that sequence of dreams, but it was painfully obvious these boys aren't British. For fuck's sake, Lenny, it ain't my job to look after you. Becca. Now, Yui, the last person in God's green earth trying to stop me from being a monster, then what do you do? Before Huey has a chance to hold up his end of the deal, Soldier Boy returns and gouges out Mindstorm's eyeballs. Before finishing the job, he gives Mindstorm a chance to explain why his team and Vought did what they did to him. And the answer, which we don't get to hear, enrages Soldier Boy. <laughs> Starlight calls to warn Butcher and Huey that taking Temp V has fatal effects after a few doses, but Butcher chooses not to tell Huey, seeing how close they are to taking out Homelander. Speaking of Homelander, he gets an unexpected call from Soldier Boy, who recalls a time when he spaffed into a test tube at Vought, and their scientists made a baby from it. That baby was born on the same day as Homelander. Born spring, 1981. A boy. If they'd have just kept me around, I'd have let you take the spotlight. What father wouldn't want that for his son? The most visually interesting part is Black Noir going back to his comfort place, where he hallucinates his cartoon pals, who helped him through the rough times when he was beaten by Soldier Boy. The story goes that Black Noir lost a movie role in Beverly Hills Cop, and he confronts Soldier Boy because he's to blame for it. You're not good enough. Now shut your cock hole and get to work. But it gets really graphic, and I actually felt empathy for a cartoon pig after witnessing the savage beating it gets. We find out that Noir was a key person in the false retirement of Soldier Boy. With baby Homelander on the scene, Vault wanted to use him as a fresh-faced and not-so-radioactive frontman. The fight to bring him down was incredibly tough, with Noir losing half his face and some brain matter. So many pixelated edits. Please, I beg of you, TV show, no more. I have enough work as it is. <laughs> There are many more things I'd love to talk about in this episode, but I've got to stay focused on recapping the main plot. I do want to cover this moment though. Milk's getting really annoyed at his daughter's stepdad for taking her to a homeland rally. Stepdaddy then insults Milk, saying, well, someone has to be a present father in her life. Marvin! Oh my God, Tom. The stepdad is a giant weasel of a bloke, but he did have a point. On the flip side, taking your kids to a political rally is a trashy move. Let your kid make up their own mind when they're old enough. Okay, so as we've been talking about milk, let's cover this one last part, where Homelander's getting super paranoid about the return of Soldier Boy, and he seeks comfort by milking a cow and drinking its raw, warm milk. <laughs> Victoria Newman ridicules him for being so out of control, and this causes him to lose his cool. But she says, wait, if you let me live, I'll give you this mysterious bit of paper, the contents of which may be revealed next episode. Opa, Soldier Boy вернулся в вод и без крови не обойдется. Homelander finds Ryan's hideout, with the information given by Newman's paper. He's not here to cause trouble, he says. He just wants Ryan to know that he will always love him, because he knows what it's like to be a kid with superpowers, and feeling like it's your fault that people around you get hurt. And nobody on this earth knows that better than me. That's why I'm always going to love you. I'm not going anywhere. I will always be here. <laughs> 
Queen Maeve is being transported to a new prison, which is a terrible decision because she's easily able to break out. <laughs> As they're breaking this news to Homelander, Black Noir suddenly walks into the room with a note that says, okay, let's kill Soldier Boy. But later that evening, Homelander has a very important question for him. Did he know that Soldier Boy was his dad the entire time? And his heart breaks in Noir's subtle nod. Did you tell me? And so there we have it, the actual death of Black Noir. I don't recall how he recovered from the Almond Joy attack, but there's no way he's surviving this. <laughs> don't worry, Irving. The boys are reunited, but not in a nice way, as they argue about the consequences of Soldier Boy fighting Homelander at the top of Vault Towers. The collateral death of vault employees and any civilians surrounding the building could be a catastrophic event. Maeve takes control and says, regardless of the countless lives that could be lost, this fight has to happen. Soldier Boy steps in to seal the deal and also to seal the naysayers into a vault. Starlight calls ahead to get the building evacuated, but Homelander says, nope, we're not afraid of the boys and I'm calling all the shots now. His first demand is that Ashley takes off her wig. Oh man, how can you not feel awful for her? The naysayers break out of the vault and think about how to make more of the same knockout gas that subdued Soldier Boy. But the only lab in close proximity is located in Vault Tower. Butcher Maeve and Soldier Boy find Homelander where he tries to appeal to his fatherly instincts, bringing out Ryan to show that he has a family now. But instead of feeling warm fatherly vibes, he just feels disappointed. Maybe if I'd raised you, I could have made you better and not some weak, sniveling pussy starved for attention. You're a f***ing disappointment. Ryan attacks Soldier Boy and he claps back. A retaliation that doesn't sit well with either of the father figures in this room. Butcher tries to call Soldier Boy off the mission to protect Ryan's life, but Soldier Boy doesn't want to hear it. Everything you wanted, he's right in there. And now you blink, stand down. F you. Homelander isn't in the clear either, as Maeve has unfinished business. The two fights are equally fantastic, with Maeve losing an eye and then jamming a metal straw into Homelander's ear. And then in the other room, we've got Soldier Boy tearing shit up. He seems unstoppable, but then Huey sees him about to end Starlight and gets the idea to ramp up the power to all the lights, allowing her to maximize her powers to the point where she's elevating off the floor. Her ability does minimal damage to him, but it's enough to knock him back, allowing Milk to apply Frenchie's nerve gas. You're just another racist piece of shit we can't seem to get rid of. Oh yeah, I skipped over the scene where he was making the gas. It just really wasn't as exciting as what's going on here. Soldier Boy refuses to be subdued again and starts to go nuclear. Maeve sees what's about to happen and so she makes the ultimate sacrifice. Ryan wants the fighting to stop and says he'll go with Homelander, half because he wants to and half because he knows this will stop Homelander going off the rails. Butcher feels like he's losing it all, including his own life, as the temp V is starting to F with his body. Doctor says he only has a year left at most. Maeve is still alive, but her powers are gone. She says that she's going to run off with her girlfriend to go live on a farm and live happily ever after. You're like a walking homework hard enough. You know what, Maeve was never a top tier character for me, but I'm genuinely happy for her. This is a good ending to her story, if of course this is the end of her story. Before we wrap up, need to quickly mention that Deep and Cassandra broke up. She can't please him in the bedroom the same way that eight legs of suction cups can. 
and it's quite poetic to see how his devotion to pleasing Homelander has made him incapable of being a decent partner to any human. And this reality hits home, seeing Cassandra bash him on a TV interview. Behind all the interest in soup drama, some boring political dramas have been in the works, where Victoria Newman has played her way into becoming Robert Singer's VP. And the boys all look at each other like, well damn, looks like we got a new target to take down in season 4. Last thing we see is Homelander revealing Ryan to the public, and the conservative crowd loves it. There is one liberal in the crowd though, and he throws something at Ryan. Instead of seeing him as a monster, the crowd goes wild, giving us this iconic moment. <laughs> All right. Well, that was an awesome season. Even the weaker parts were still fun to watch. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, if this video doesn't do well, well I'm gonna be really stressed, because the last few videos have done crap numbers, and my money is starting to dip. I don't mind sharing this kind of thing with the people who stick around till the end of my videos. You're the real ones for being here, so I'm being real with you. You guys on Patreon and my channel members know how much this means to me. Sean Brown, I believe you were the first channel member, so it's about time you get a shout out. Elder, same goes for you on Patreon. I'll see you all in the comments section. I'm looking forward to hearing what you think on this one. And yes, before you ask, my recap of season 4 is coming soon.